Hello friends, in today's presentation, I will be talking about the conventional approaches to distal femur fractures with a special attention to the swashbuckler approach. So why one approach may not be sufficient for distal femur fractures? Because of the peculiar anatomy of the distal femur. You see for plate placement, we have the posterolateral surface and the posteromedial surface, then lateral surface, then the medial surface and the anterior part is not available for plating because it forms the articulation with the patella to form the patellofemoral joint. So the lateral surface and the medial surface and the posteromedial surface and the posterolateral surface are not close, they are wide apart. So one approach may not be sufficient for exposing whole of the distal femur for the lateral, for the medial, for the posteromedial and for the posterolateral surfaces. However, there are some tricks which can be used for adequate exposure of these surfaces that we'll be seeing in the coming slides. So we all are aware of the lateral approach to the femur, which can be extended distally also if we want to expose the lateral surface of the distal femur. If we want to reduce the fracture under direct vision, that means open reduction, then we can use a longitudinal incision to expose the fracture. But if we want to reduce the fracture indirectly, then we can use the MIPO technique also in which only some part of the incision are used for passage of the lateral plate. So whole of the lateral surface including the distal part can be exposed with the lateral approach. What we need to do, we place a lateral incision then after substituting this dissection, we split the tensor fascia lata which is actually confluent with the deep fascia of the thigh and after that we expose the vastus lateralis muscle then we lift the vastus lateralis muscle th through the lateral intramuscular septum and retract the muscle medially that is going to expose the lateral part of the femur including the distal femur that will be sufficient for placement of plate or an implant on the lateral aspect and in some articular fractures also which are not much displaced which have maintained articular reduction or minor displacement is there which can be corrected with joystick maneuvers then we can use the MIPO technique also in which only some part of the lateral approach is used for placement of the plate so the plate can be entered from the distal part then slid over the lateral surface of the femur proximally and the proximal screws can be placed with the use of stab holes for passage of the locking sleeve so in lateral approach to the distal femur, we place our incision on the lateral aspect, then extend it distally. We will be able to expose the lateral surface of the distal femur. So if you see the incision in the axial section, it grows from here. Then we go underneath the vastus lateralis till the intramuscular septum on the lateral side, then expose the distal part of the femur. And this is the actual area of interest if we want exposure of the articular surface of the distal femur. So if we want exposure of the articular surface of the distal femur, we will have to retract skin, the subcutaneous tissue and whole bulk of the muscle towards the medial side. And it is going to be very difficult. And also the lateral part of the extensor retinaculum, it also needs to be retracted medially and it's going to be difficult. For example, you see here, the surgeon has placed the plate now, even after placement of the home and liver, he is facing difficulty in exposing the article surface. Why? Because our incision is quite lateral. If we want to expose the trochlea or remaining part of the article surface of the distal femur, the incision needs to be tapered more medially. It should not lie on the lateral side. We'll see in the coming slide. So we want our incision to taper towards the petla and the tibial tuberosity if we want to expose the article surface in addition to the lateral part of the distal femur. So we have to lift the vastus lateralis and extend our incision slightly lateral to the petla so that a lateral parapetlar arthrotomy is performed. By that, we'll be able to expose the trochlea and after placement of a bone lever towards the medial side, we'll be able to retract the petla medially. So the incision should go like this. It should taper towards the tibial tuberosity. It should not be like this. Our lateral incision goes like this. And whenever we are exposing the articular surface, we have to lift whole of the muscle bulk towards the medial side. But for displaced articular fractures like this, we definitely need good articular exposure without any difficulty. So is there any better approach for exposure of the articular surface? Yes, definitely there is. What we can do? We can make our incision more central. So if we place our incision more in midline, which will be 
centered over the petla and following the axis of the shaft of the femur then our incision will look like this we can directly split the muscle in the midline over the quadriceps tendon then retract the lateral half of the muscle on the lateral side and medial half of the, of the muscle on the medial side that is going to provide a good exposure of the articular surface like this and whether to go lateral parapetalar or medial parapetalar will be decided by the side which is more complex that means whether the medial side is more complex or the lateral side is more complex if we want to place more implants on the medial side that means you want to place a plate on the medial side and on the posteromedial side also then better to perform a medial parapetalar arthrotomy otherwise it's all up to you you can use either of the medial or lateral parapetalar arthrotomy but only thing you need to take care is to preserve of around one centimeter of the retinoculum which is close to the petla because that is going to help in repair of the extensor retinoculum and also it is going to preserve the blood vessels which are forming a ring around the petla and if we hamper that vascularity the patient is going to have chronic knee pain that should be avoided so this kind of exposure can be achieved with the midline parapetlar approach you see we are able to visualize whole of the medial condyle as well as lateral condyle and the petla has been retracted laterally here you can see we have placed the plate on the lateral aspect while here we have placed the plate on the medial aspect we have space for placement of the plate on the posteromedial aspect as well so if you want a good exposure then definitely a midline parapetlar approach can be useful so either the lateral parapetlar approach or the medial parapetlar approach can be used but the problem with this approach is that we are going to split the muscle into two halves that is going to reduce the functional capacity of the muscle during the rehabilitation so another alternative to the midline parapetlar approach is the dual approach in which we go on the medial side and lateral side of the petla to expose both the lateral condyle and medial condyle of the distal femur however it hinders the view of the trochlea so definitely the exposure is a problem in this approach but the continuity of the muscle remains maintained you do not split it in midline so it's good for rehabilitation purpose but at the expense of the exposure in the trochlear part but so the dual approach should be used only when you have good expertise in management of distal femur fractures for visualization of the trochlea you'll need a retractor to lift the petla anteriorly and then visualize the trochlear part so this is an example of a case in which both medial condyle and lateral condyle have a comminuted fracture which is extending in the trochlea also and for these kind of fractures definitely we need a dual approach because we want to place a plate on the posteromedial and posterolateral aspect as well in addition to the lateral and the medial surfaces so the dual approach will address the exposure of posteromedial and posterolateral as well as the lateral and medial parts of the distal femur another approach which is not frequently used is the tibial tubercle osteotomy approach in which we give dual incisions both on the medial side and the lateral side just like in dual approach but we taper our incision towards the tibial reciprocity so either a y incision can be used like this or a v shaped incision can be used like this which is tapering towards the tibial reciprocity and a large fragment of tibial reciprocity is osteotomized and retracted proximally and that is going to help in the exposure of the whole of the distal femur articular surface including the trochlea and once the fracture fixation has been done the tibial reciprocity can be fixed with two or three leg screws but this approach has not been frequently used because of the risk of non-union of the tibial reciprocity even i don't have any experience in past of using this approach so i will not be recommending this approach then comes the main approach the swashbuckler approach so in swashbuckler approach the incision remains midline that means it has to follow the axis of the femur then centered over the petla then towards the tibial reciprocity so the incision goes like this but you see we have to retract only the muscle from the intermuscular septum the area of interest lies here the skin and the subcutaneous tissue doesn't need reduction towards the medial side so definitely it is going to make it less cumbersome for exposure of the distal femur articular surface in the lateral approach the incision was somewhere here and we had to retract the skin and the subcutaneous tissue also in addition to the muscle but in swashbuckler approach only the muscle needs to be retracted the advantage of the swashbuckler approach to the midline approach even when the incision remains same is that the continuity of the muscle remains maintained so what we do we go for a midline skin incision then do subcutaneous dissection 
then split the fascia over the vastus group of muscles and you see the fascia is actually in continuity with the iliotibial band on the left side so once the fascia has been incised we will be able to see the bulk of vastus lateralis muscle and what we need to do we have to lift the muscle away from the intramuscular septum which is also confluent with the iliotibial band so we need to lift the muscle using blunt dissection proximally if we need more exposure then we can extend our incision more proximally because that is going to help the retraction of the muscle more medially so the petla lies here and the distal part of the incision has to be tapered towards the tibial tuberosity then the second step is to retract the muscle belly towards the medial side you see you'll be able to expose the anterior part of the distal femur when you retract the vastus muscle medially this part is the synovium and when we split the synovium we'll be able to see the articular surface you see the whole of the muscle belly has been retracted towards the medial side the petla has been dislocated on the medial side and to maintain this position the surgeon has placed a k-wire that is going to keep the petla on the medial side just to gain a good exposure here also the same step has been used you see whole of the lateral article surface and some part of the medial article surface are well visualized but this approach may not suffice for the posteromedial exposure while you will be able to see the lateral side and the posterior lateral side the anterior side and the medial side but it will not be easy to place the plate on the posteromedial side so while with midline approach that we had seen earlier in which we performed the medial parapetalar arthrotomy we will be able to expose all of these surfaces we will not be able to do so with the swashbuckler approach and if we try to do so definitely our proximal incision is going to be somewhere very proximal because for visualization of the posteromedial part just imagine how much you will need to retract the vastus lateralis posteriorly and that will be possible only if you release it more proximally from the intramuscular septum so i will not recommend this approach when you are planning for posteromedial implant placement and what about the medial approach so whenever our area of interest is on the medial side that means medial condyle is fractured or there is hofa fracture on the medial side or there is any isolated medial condylar injury then definitely we can go for the medial approach in medial approach again we give a longitudinal incision then taper it towards the petla and if we want the distal exposure then we can definitely go towards the tibial tuberosity we have to remain medial to the petla again we have to preserve a part of retinaculum that remains attached to the petla for the pair and also to preserve the vascular ring around the petla which can otherwise result in prolonged knee pain in follow so the plane of dissection is from the vastus medialis we lift the muscle from the medial intramuscular septum and be careful you remain anterior to the intramuscular septum otherwise you injure the vessels which are lying just behind the intramuscular septum the, then retract the muscle anteriorly or you can say laterally to expose the medial surface and some anterior part also if required so here you see we have exposed the medial condyle and some part of the trochlea has also been visualized because we want to address this area but if we want more posterior exposure then definitely we can put our incision slightly more posteriorly and you have to be careful you just need to lift the vastus medialis muscle from the intramuscular septum which can be seen here then expose the medial surface for your implant placement you can go more posteriorly if you want implant placement on the posteromedial surface but the critical part is you to remain anterior to the intramuscular septum once you have reached the bone then definitely you can use a periosteal elevator to keep a bone lever flush to the posterior surface that will keep all the vital structures behind the bone lever and you'll be able to place the implant on the posteromedial surface as per the requirement so these were the simple basics whenever you are planning the approaches for distal femur so these approaches are sufficient for most of the distal femur fractures thank you